Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of GIS Answers. Today we'll be looking at uh, some Bigfoot data provided by Esri and it's on their ArcGIS hub. The data is uh, BFRO, Bigfoot Research Organization data, sightings of Bigfoot or Sasquatch or Yeti or whatever you want to call them. So this is the ArcGIS hub and we have the map points of the sightings, thousands of sightings in North America. Well, what I want to do is download this data and look at it in ArcGIS Pro. So we can go to download and there's various formats. I mean, you could go into KML and look at this in Google Earth, but we're gonna download into shapefile. Once we've done that, we need to unzip that and create a folder or create a, a, a location and save, unzip the data and you'll have your shape files there. So that's what we've done. And going into ArcGIS Pro, we're going to add data. Bigfoot data, Bigfoot sightings, and I was wrong, there actually are some sightings outside of North America, but the majority are within North America. And what we're going to do is change the base map, I kind of like the world topographic map as a base map might be more suitable and we're going to zoom in on North America Looking at Missouri, some of the sightings. Let's actually make some of these the sightings actually uh, that symbology. A little bit bigger. So they stand out a little bit more. Panning across the United States. You'll see clusters of sightings. There's a cluster here. And we can click on these points. Let's have, a, let's have a look. And have a look at the data and see what we get. Campus says a Sasquatch entered a cabin, a cabin of sleeping. Sleeping girls. Sorry, the BFRO logo is, is over that. 1977. Interesting. Family has an early morning encounter. So as you can see, this data is uh, quite extensive. State of Florida, huge cluster of sightings, 
the skunk ape they have in Florida. Gonna dock this in from this uh, pop up. A lot of these encounters are people that uh, recall childhood memories of uh, Bigfoot encounters. Footprints, vocalizations. Wood knocks, smells. So they're not all sightings. They can be all kinds of different encounters. Um, sounds, smells. Footprints. Campers awakened by heavy bipedal footsteps. Some of the work that I might be uh, looking at doing in the near future, and actually that I've done in the past, work that I want to uh, look into is analyzing these sightings in relation to uh, water courses or water sources. Um, there seems to be a correlation between sightings and riverbeds, streams, lakes. But there's also correlations between caves and obviously national parks too. There's a national park here with quite a few sightings just because there's open space and uh, if, if if you are a Sasquatch perhaps you'd like to live there where it's nice and quiet there are some sightings in Canada um, but I think there's a lot more sightings and uh, that have been that haven't been reported um, or investigated by BFRO because BFRO is generally is an American organization uh, with little presence in Canada right now. Strange to see that there's um, quite a few sightings in and around Cleveland, just on the edge of on the fringe of, of Cleveland. Um, not many in the urban areas themselves, but you know on the on the fringe of large cities. So that's what I got to show today. Hopefully you enjoyed this. If you'd like to see uh, more work on the uh, Bigfoot analysis, um, just let me know. As you can see, along the Rocky Mountains is the is the huge cluster, and in Washington State, just uh, just an overwhelming number of sightings. In the Rocky Mountains. Anyway, if you liked the video, please subscribe to the channel and uh, hopefully uh, you enjoyed the video. And if you want to see more um, about the Bigfoot uh, sightings uh, data, please let me know or you can download the data yourself and take a look. Thanks.